Hello and welcome. If you want to learn more about uh, German World War II issued Kriegsmarine or War Navy pieces, you've come to the right place. This is uh, my humble collection of, well, only Kriegsmarine watches. And yeah, I've ordered them by kind and I will zoom in on them in a bit. So in the middle, I've got a few specials. This one, um, pocket watch in the Kriegsmarine, there were many, many more pocket watches and types, but I am only main, mainly focus on wrist watches and don't care much for pocket watches. Um, so I don't buy them, except for this one, I just came across it and it was too good of a deal to pass up on. Uh, as you can see, this pocket watch is um, KM Alpina, just like these guys which I'll zoom in on in a bit. Um, for the pocket watch, uh, to recognize it's legit, basically for all the Kriegsmarine watches, you've got KM on the dial, and then usually below the KM, you've got the name of the maker. This is Alpina, you've got many more different ones. And the back, you've got the six digit serial number. And that's it, it's just a serial number, nothing more for the um, here, for the, um, ground troops you've got dh or whatever um, but this one just um, serial number only and the dial basically gives it away so km stands for kriegsmarine which is war navy they start making these in 1935 um, until 1945 uh, alpina is um well not the most well-known brand anymore nowadays, but it was rather big back in the day. Um, these were issued together with the KM Siegerin. The Siegerin is from Marc Favre, um, but he actually... Um, well, it's likely that the Siegerin watches were delivered through Alpina because they're pretty much the same spec. Just a different name on the dial. The Alpina, you don't only have these ones, but you've also got the 720s and the 592s and also the 586s. But uh, I don't have any 586s. The 586 anymore at the moment. Um, so if you've got one uh, that you want to sell, let me know. I would be happy to add it to my collection again. Because I actually used to have uh, two of them, but I sold them and haven't picked up any new ones since um so yeah you've got the km alpina the um km 592 the five uh, the 720 and then the um 586 and all of those are alpina watches with alpina movement obviously and uh, the number is just which movement is in there so if it's uh, km 720 it has a uh, alpina 720 caliber inside this one has a um, 5.92 caliber inside. This one, the KM Alpina, has uh, a 5.86 inside, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I don't have my case knife with me, but I can show later. Um, then we've got the KM Zentra. For the Zentra, you have three different models. Most of them are chrome-plated like these or nickel finish could be as well and then you've also got uh, all stainless steel which is rather rare actually both these are all stainless steel i'll zoom in on the details later then two celsius these are actually rather rare these are um, well you don't come across them very often uh, these are also chrome plated and then the zikrin i already showed then the rarest of the bunch this is the wagner and the berg you've got about four or five uh, others like Mitchell uh, um, and others of which the name escapes me right now and then these you might think are peculiar because well everything has a white dial or well what used to be white and patinate like these uh, beauties um, but these are also Kriegsmarine issued which you cannot tell by the front, but by the back engraving, the eagle with swastika and the M means it was issued to the Kriegsmarine. And this one too also, um, well, it has been polished out in the past, but you can still make out the markings. 
Uh, this one actually very very remarkable watch because in the front you might notice the W with the crown which stands for Wilhelmina. It's um, the Dutch military. Uh, they actually ordered a bunch of watches in 1939 uh, right before the war started. And, um, well, it's rumored, well not rumored, it's um, um, assumed that well, once the Germans invaded, um, well, they attacked the Netherlands, and like I think six or ten days later, the net the Dutch capitulated after Rotterdam got completely demolished, uh, bombed, and then the Germans they confiscated the Dutch watches, and they added their own stamps to it, which which might be why this one doesn't correspond to regular Kriegsmarine. It's just because they needed all the watches they could get, so yeah, they use whatever they can get. There's also um, a few Universal Genève with this uh, same Wilhelmina crown, and also a few Era watches. Um, some of those are also double stamp with DH. Anyway, um, now maybe something if you want to start collecting yourself, something very important. How do you recognize a good watch? um let's start with the km alpina this one is the most honest example as it's fully original the dial as you can see is a bit faded but these ones the dial um, they don't use the best materials so the dials usually um, don't age very well this one as you can see the hands have been relumed this one is fairly good this one the case is super solid it's um it's fully original, hasn't been replated or rechromed, which most have. This one also, obviously, um, it's original, but the plating is heavily worn. Um, but I actually prefer it when it's worn rather than rechromed, because well, if you want, you can still get it rechromed. But this one, at least you know, it hasn't been messed with except the crown which has been um, changed over time while well, it has been replaced but that uh, often happens with these things uh, this one then which looks the nicest has been re-chromed um, to spot that well it takes some practice it takes some effort but you can tell that the lugs they are a bit rounded while here they are very sharp just like this one the lugs are very sharp and this one, the lugs are rounded. This one obviously has been re-chromed at some point in the past. And the hands have likely also been replaced. But it's, uh, well, that's also speculation. Because, well, they made, um, well, over the same model, they still made different vari uh, variants. So, yeah, um, it's hard to tell if the hands are original or not, but... I would wager they have been replaced. Um, this one though, the case back is still sharp and yeah, like also all of these have fixed lug bars. So you would, ne well, if it has removable uh, spring bars, then you know it has been replaced, it has been messed with. These normally have um, the stick hands with loom inserts. This one is fully original. Um, as you can see, the crystal has a lot of crazing, but I actually like it because then you know that it's original, it hasn't been changed. Um, the crown also nice, is uh, very nice to wind with because it has a nice heft to it. Um, then on to the next one, we've got the KM Green. Over here, it's um, I cannot show you a re-chromed one because I don't have any. Because I actually try to stay away from the re-chromed things because I don't like them. This one, uh, this one, um, the crown has been replaced, the hands have been relumed, and some idiot put his thumbprints all over the dial. Um, that well, watchmakers back in the day. The watches were tools um, just for utility, so they didn't care that much about aesthetics. So yeah, someone put his stem on the dial and the, um, the oils from his hand, they got on there and 
yeah they got the result you can see now if there had been a database it would have been interesting to look him up but yeah that's only more modern so yeah this one uh, more original crown has also been replaced you can see the plating is worn but also very sharp looks just this is actually the same as the km alpina uh, the zigrin also uses an alpina movement if i'm not mistaken just a second i'm gonna get a um, case knife and open them up for you all right um, i got a case knife real quick so i could pop this one open and as you can see inside it's a 595 which is a alpina movement um, it's marked Zigrin, but yeah, it comes from Alpina. Uh, Edelstahlboden means um, stainless steel. Um, stainless steel back. Boden is, um, well, bottom or back. Um, so yeah, stainless steel back with a chromed case. And you've, just like all of these, you've always got the six digit serial number on the case back, the KM on the dial. This one's Sigrin. Um, they also have the stick hands, just like the Alpina, but they are slightly different in the loom, because the Alpina has uh, square inserts, while the Sigrin, the inserts, uh, they start out with um, like, an, well, they're arrow-ish inserts, or however you would call it, V, V inserts um like they are like that um i've also popped open an alpina um just so you can see so this is the alpina inside is a proud 586 sticking so yeah most of these have the 586 inside but you've also got one with 586 on the dial maybe that's why the 586 is more rare because um the majority of them just had alpina on the dial rather than 586 um there is still a lot about these watches unknown you can learn a lot from konrad knirim's militar militaire uhren uh, military timepieces uh, german military timepieces however i still find his work um a bit um, inconclusive and uh, limited then on to a more rare one this is the Celsa uh, two of them this one the right one is fully original the left one has a crown replaced um, as you can see the Celsa is um, well these are from different uh, times and they have aged a bit differently um, but yeah they're the same spec you've got uh, the um the indices have been loomed which is what makes them age a bit difficult but this one aged significantly better than the other um they both have a, a bit of a different case than the others these have a screw case back it says stahlboden was dicht anti-magnetic which means uh, steel bottom waterproof anti-magnetic and shock resist and then yeah same here but this one actually is really cool this one has an engraving on the back this is a uh, i assume from the original owner from je feldman from osterat i looked it up one time but i forgot where it was <laughs> i think it's somewhere um, on the border with the netherlands if i'm not mistaken uh, anyway, I screwed this one open as well, and so we can have a look at the movement. So inside case back, no markings. Then the movement has a Celza Biel. Um, doesn't have any immediate markings, but there is um, under the under the balance wheel. You've got a marking. I should actually have prepared this video better because that didn't happen. Um, I spent too much time just unpacking all of my watches. They didn't get around to actually making all the proper preparations and research. Okay, I'm gonna look real quick. It says um, 9 
808, 808, something like it. Uh, I'll put it in the description below. You'll find the info there. Um, yeah, looks like a, um, a shield movement or an early ATA. I would say a shield. Uh, this one has a mild form of shock protection, which is, uh, well, obviously it also says shock resist. But yeah, this is um, very nice for the early ones because most uh, didn't have any shock protection. Maybe that's why the cells are more rare because they are more expensive to make. Then from the Celta, we'll move on to the Zentra. With the Zentra, we'll first start with the stainless steel um, because they're closest by. So yeah, these ones, they're both exactly the same spec, but they aged a bit differently. Let's get back to one. Um, well, this one, as you can see, still has a um, a scratched up crystal which is obviously easily replaced but i like to keep them original these both have a uh, fully original parts original crown uh, case is in excellent condition this one has been gently polished in the past but still both are really nice the dials though they have patinated so differently this one like a nice um i would say tibet like this is as if it's a uh, a wall of a smoker this one is like the lungs of a smoker so yeah you can tell the difference but the blue hands they just pop so beautifully um so yeah these ones they also have a screw case back and the three digits on the on the back case obviously and they are powered by a zentra caliber 8 as you can see here um and inside yeah it says rustfreier stahl which literally means rust free steel so stainless steel um yeah these ones um they are among the most desirable because they are stainless steel which every single other kriegsmarine watch is chromed um why did they use so many chromed watches in the day because all steel needed to go to the war production and if you use a steel for the watches and you can't make any tanks and boats and whatever so yeah um from the steel zentra to the other zentras here we have two different ones um, i will grab three ones to demonstrate uh, these are chrome plated this one has been not been re -chromed. no all are original yeah this one is just in excellent condition um yeah all three are original in varying states but these are the same model and this is a different case model which you can like from the front you can already tell a little bit but it's very apparent when you look at the back because this one has a slotted um screw case back this one has a scalloped case back so you've got these little um little tiny windows but that's about it uh well this one obviously is a lot easier to open up um yeah so what's inside i've um, unscrewed two of these just so i can demonstrate just need to find which one i unscrewed oh, this one so yeah this one also original crown has been replaced um, this one has a Zentra 338 inside. And then the other one, this one has a 334, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, 334. And this is a bit thinner model. Um, the other one is a bit thicker, which you can tell here as well. Well, the crystal also plays a role, obviously, but this watch in general is thicker and heavier. This case is a lot lighter. I think it's likely this was used uh, later in the war um, when there was even less steel available. Um, but yeah, both are very nice. Then let's highlight this one. It's in superb condition. And this one has a uh, Russian writing on the back. 
Um, this one was likely captured from, um, well, likely the, the, well, the Russians got a hold of, well, likely. It's very obvious the Russians got a hold of this watch. And yeah, it became someone's personal memento of the war. Um, just, yeah, I'm happy they babied it. Um, just look at that dial, so pretty. Um, so yeah, these ones, um, the Kriegsmarine Zentra in chrome. They all have uh, also a cream dial with uh, loomed um, numerals. The difference between the two cases as well is this one only has loomed numerals, no dots. This one has numerals and dots. The numerals are not loomed, I think. Yeah, the loom, the numerals on these are just printed, and only the dots are loomed. Um, and the hands are steel or silver colored, while usually the hands are blued for the, um, Zen, well for all the Kriegsmarine watches. Then next up we've got um, some of the Alpina family again. We've got the Alpina five nine two. Um, of which mine, for some reason, are all in pretty bad condition. Um, I'm still looking for nice ones, obviously. Um, this one is actually nice, but has been re-chromed and not a very good job. So, yeah, I think I should get redone, but I actually don't like the glossy finish of a re-chromed one. But yeah, the dial um, normally has a a white dial with um, black indices and then um, the loom dots on the uh, railroad minute track and has blued hands with um, well you've got two variants although this one might have just been replaced it's um, yeah it's a tough call this is more like the Zentra, but um, these are blue, these are steel. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I would say these might have been replaced. These are definitely the original hands. So um, if you go for full originality, I would always um, aim for these kind of hands, the stick hands with, uh, well, the pencil hands with uh, square loom, in, well, rectangular loom inserts. This one, um, well, the crown is original, even though the uh, case has been replated. And also a six digit serial on the case back, obviously. Here you've got the Alpina marking and then, yeah, the 592 movement, which is not yet beating inside. And there you go. Yeah, I haven't wounded a lot. I don't uh, run these. Uh, this hasn't been serviced in many decades. So um, the oscillation of the balance is rather low. But these all do keep pretty good time. Um, then next up, we've got the 720, of which I have many. Uh, these also, you've only got one model pretty much, and they all have a 720 inside. These are some of the nicest, but yeah, for some reason these survived a lot nicer than most other watches I have. This one has been re-chromed, this left one, but it's, um, well, they did a good job. This one also has been re-chromed, the right one. Um, these ones are original, you can tell it's the same case um, for the most part as the Alpina, um, but a bit thinner lux, a bit longer, a bit thinner, but yeah, most of these get re-chromed, which you can tell by the lux, which are even thinner, and yeah, just there's no curvature, because, um, well, there's curvature, a lot of it. Because this one has very straight edges, it's just hop, hop, and that's it. While well, here you've got like a curve on the edge, um, which isn't uh, with came from factory. 
This one also has a six digit serial on the case back. Um, also has blued hands. Um, this one does have um, like pencil syringe hands. You can tell the dots on here. And yeah, inside obviously has a caliber 720. Luckily I've already wounded. Yeah, this one does say Festa, but Festa is just uh, another brand of Alpina. Um, then the last ones, I haven't actually opened them up. Um, there we go. But yeah, these ones, they all have a, a form, formwerk or how the Germans would pronounce it. Oh. Yeah, I shouldn't look in the video. All right, so yeah, this uh, KM Berg, I uh, quickly opened it up for you guys. Um, they originally have, uh, well, the case back, and then there's a dustproof cover inside. Um, these have a PUW 500 beating inside, which was made in Fordsheim. Um, it's, um, well, a city in the Black Forest. Uh, so these are all made within Germany and all of the big ones, they basically have all the same case design, just like this KM Berg, uh, KM Wag Wagner. Um, they all have identical case design, identical dials, just a different name on there. I also opened this one up. Uh, so you've got the case, the dust cover, and then the PUW 500 caliber. Uh, this one, as you can see, it's missing the crown and uh, the stem. But that's no big deal because it's fully original otherwise. And just in really, really nice, honest, original condition. And that's what I like about collecting. Uh, doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be original. And this one, yeah, I can put on a new crown and um new stem and crown it's really easy and then i've got a nice piece of history but prefer to keep them as is as much as i can just because um yeah you never know this one also the strap appears original which is well obviously a very 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 special thing but um, yeah, for original straps, like you can look for markings, um, but it's hard to find. But this one, this kind of buckle is the type they had back in the day. Uh, this is a kind of leather. Um, but yeah, you often can never tell. Although like for some, you've got a little um, eagle with swastika there. So yeah. Anyway, hope you like it. Um, that's it for these. I will make a few other videos for other watches. Um, like the British military, the German Wehrmacht, German Luftwaffe. Many, many, many more videos to come.